let us now look at magnetism. In terms of magnetic properties, materials can be divided into diamagnetic, paramagnetic, and ferromagnetic materials. So diamagnetic materials um, are made of atoms that um, don't have unpaired electrons. Um, so that means that they do not have a net magnetic field. Um, they're um, plastics, uh, wood, glass, water, things like that. Um, and they're actually told to be a little bit anti-magnetic. They get a little bit repelled by magnets. Paramagnetic materials, um, atoms do have unpaired electrons, and they can become weakly magnetized while in an external magnetic field. Um, some examples of paramagnetic materials are aluminum, um, gold, copper. Then ferromagnetic materials, um, atoms again have unpaired electrons just like with paramagnetic materials. Uh, but unlike the paramagnetic materials, ferromagnetic materials can be strongly um, magnetized in an external magnetic field or um, at a specific high temperature. And examples of ferromagnetic materials are iron, uh, nickel, and cobalt. So magnets um, have magnetic fields around them. Uh, a magnetic field is measured in Tesla. There is another unit um, that we can use for magnetic field. It's not the SI unit. It's called the Gauss, so one Gauss um, or one G is 10 to the negative four Tesla. Um, so when we're measuring the magnetic field of the Earth, for instance, um, magnetic field of the Earth is very small, so we would use the uh, Gauss units rather than the Tesla units. Um, any magnet has a north pole and a south pole. Their magnetic monopoles do not exist. And magnetic field lines come out of the north pole and go into the south pole. So let's say that we have a magnet like this. Let's say that um, this is north and this is south. Magnetic fields will circle around the magnet like this. So these would be magnetic field lines. And magnetic fields come out of the North Pole and go into the South Pole. So what that means is that the magnetic field circles around from North and into South. So the direction of the magnetic field is out of north and into south. Now, if we have a charged particle that's moving in a magnetic field, um, it can experience a force. So let's look at uh, the magnitude of this um, force. Um, the force is equal to the charge times its velocity times the magnetic field times sine of the angle between the velocity and the magnetic field. So that's why I said that um, the particle can experience a force. It doesn't necessarily have to experience a force. Um, the velocity and the magnetic field have to have components that are perpendicular to one another. So uh, let's look at a magnetic field, say, going to the right. And let's say that we have a positive particle here, and it's moving in that direction. Then the angle between the velocity and the direction of the magnetic field is this angle theta. So when we're taking sine theta, we're getting this component of the velocity. So this component is the perpendicular component to the magnetic field. So if the charge were moving, so here's another charge moving in the same direction as the magnetic field with velocity v, then theta would be 0, sine 0 is 0, so the, this particle would not experience a force. Of course, the maximum force will be when the velocity is perpendicular to the magnetic field. Then we have 
an angle of 90 degrees, sine 90 is 1. Now the direction of the force is given by the right hand rule. So let's have a magnetic field that is into the paper. So these crosses mean that the magnetic field is going into the paper. Think of an arrow um, moving away from you. And then let's have a positive charge moving to the right. So to figure out the direction of the force, what we have to do is place our hand parallel to the velocity. So our fingers should be in the direction of the velocity, which means that our hand should be with the fingers to the right. Then we bend our fingers in the direction of the magnetic field. Magnetic field is into the paper, so bend the fingers so that they would pierce the paper if pushed too hard. Then when you stretch out your thumb, it will point up like this in the direction of the force. So let's try that again. Hand with the fingers pointing in the direction of the velocity and the palm of the hand facing the paper. Because if that's the case, then we can bend our fingers into the paper in the direction of magnetic field and the thumb would point up. And that's what I have here. The hand with the fingers in the direction of the velocity, bend the fingers in the direction of the magnetic field, and the outstretched thumb will be in the direction of the force. Now, um, here's a note about this. Um, if the charge is negative, so looking at the, the equation for the force, if Q is negative, then we have to insert a negative sign in front of this whole quantity. And what that means is that the direction of the force will be in the opposite direction of the one described in here, in these three lines here. So let's look at that. Um, how about we have a magnetic field uh, coming out of the page? And the velocity of a, I mean, right B here, the velocity of a negative particle would be up. So to do the right hand rule, we have to place our hand with the fingers in the direction of the velocity. So right now the fingers are up along the uh, plane. Um, now you have to t bend your fingers in the direction of the magnetic field. If your palm faces the paper, then you can't bend your fingers out of the paper. So you have to rotate your hand while keeping the fingers going up towards the top of the page. So now that the palm of your hand is away from the paper, and now you can bend your fingers in the direction of the magnetic field coming out of the paper, and your thumb would point to the right for a positive particle. But since we're dealing with a negative particle, the force on it will be in the opposite direction. All right, now, if we have a whole bunch of charges um, traveling through a wire, they form an electric current. And the symbol for electric current is I, and that's the change in Q divided by the change in T, so that is the equation for the current. Uh, the unit for current is the ampere, um, or amp. The symbol for it is just A. Now, currents in a magnetic field can experience a force just as charges moving in a magnetic field can experience a force. So the magnitude of that force is ILB sine theta. So if we compare the above equation for the force on a charge moving in a magnetic field with a, the force of a current in a magnetic field, the equations are very similar. So um, that means that the direction is also given by the right-hand rule. So 
In this situation, the hand will be parallel to the wire with the fingers in the direction of the current. Then bend the fingers in the direction of the magnetic field just like we did over here. And the thumb is again the force just like it was over there. So let's look at an example. Let's say that we have a current going up, call that I. And let's say that there is a magnetic field going into the page. So this is a magnetic field that the current is placed in. Then we place our hand parallel to the wire with fingers in the direction of the current. So my hand right now faces um, the paper with my fingers up towards the top of the paper. Then I can bend my fingers into the paper and the force will be to the left. So the right hand rule is the same. The force is the thumb. The magnetic field is the direction that we bend our fingers in. And the direction that the hand is in the first place is the direction of the current here, the direction of the velocity before. Now, currents also create magnetic fields. A long current carrying wire creates a magnetic field that's equal to mu naught i over 2 pi r. This mu naught uh, quantity is 4 pi times 10 to the negative 7th tesla meters per amps and it's called the permeability of free space. So some things to pay attention to. So let me rewrite the magnetic field equation for the uh, wire uh, creates, so that's mu naught i over 2 pi r. So um, mu naught is the permeability of free space, i is the current, and then r is the distance away from the wire. So let me draw a wire current i, and now I want to know what the magnetic field is created by the wire. I will use a different right hand rule than before where I place my thumb in the direction of the current. So my thumb is pointing up towards the page and towards the top of the page, I mean. And then my fingers, when I bend them, I hold on to that wire that's there. Um, they go around in that direction. So that means that on the right side of the wire, the magnetic field is into the page. On the left side of the wire, the magnetic field is out of the page. So that would be the direction of the magnetic field. And R is a distance from the wire to the location where we're interested in the magnetic field. So you'll see that um, the further away we move from the wire, the weaker the magnetic field will become. Another shape of wire um, that also produces a magnetic field is a loop of wire. So a loop of wire looks like this. Let's say that there is a current I going this loop of wire. Um, again, you place your thumb in the direction of the current and the hand, the fingers have to be inside the loop. So the magnetic field will then go into the loop. Now, I'm going to draw the current at the bottom here as well. It's going to be easier to, um, to grab a hold of the loop. So the thumbs to the left and the fingers are above the thumb because you want them to go into the loop, not outside. Now, if I rotate my, my hand with my thumb still in this direction and my fingers below here somewhere, then you would get a magnetic field coming out of the page. But uh, with uh, loops of wire, we only consider the magnetic field inside the loop, anywhere in here, because um, outside the magnetic field is a lot weaker. So this is a short um, explanation of magnetic fields.